What's up guys, Toogie here, back again, a very, very tired Toogie back again, it is a tired 24 episode, let me tell you, we're back again with another episode of my Vegas Golden Knights franchise mode series, yeah, and once again, it's a pretty damn big episode for me, for you, for us. For YouTubers, and me, of which am I one? I don't know. How big of a channel do you have to have to call yourself a YouTuber, but to the point where it's like, okay, if you, then, but then when's the threshold of like, okay, now it feels kind of cringy to call myself a YouTuber? I don't even know anymore. Point is, it's a big episode. Before we get into stuff, though, I want to get to a couple of your comments. Steve Swanson, how far is Seattle from Vegas? Excuse me, sir. Do I look like a clown? To you, am I here to amuse you? Am I funny to you? I don't take demands or questions very well. And while it's phrased as a question, it seems like a demand, Steve. And I'm not here to make stupid, maybe kind of funny, but not really jump cuts at a moment's notice. Seattle is, I don't know, Steve, get a map. Sorry if this has already been asked, but has Fog of War been turned off for good in the series? Uh, not, maybe, kind of, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should it go back on? Because I kind of don't mind having it off for the draft. I like having it on in the regular season, I guess. But then we just turn it off for the playoffs to see how good the AI is. It's a nice touch, but with you guys wanting information, maybe it makes sense to have it off. Trade Dwyer at the draft for a top five pick. Uh, yeah, you're going to have a bad time with that suggestion. Change Goldobin's number to number two. I probably will. We'll take a look at the numbers here once we are done with this roster. I'm going through uh, the comments here because I don't want to make a jump cut. I personally think Dwyer is underappreciated. Yes, but maybe the voting will prove otherwise. Why don't you sign Reitz as the AHL backup? He'll grow leaps and bounds. Number one. Maybe, potentially, he'll grow. Players can still grow while being unsigned, obviously. Look at Tate Dwyer, for example, or Sergei Nazarov in the SEAL series. When it comes to someone of his overall, though, being a half-decent NHL backup, he's going to be kind of terrible. Whether or not he's a future starter, I would still argue that he is a bit too young, but we'll see what we do here. As really, it comes down to the question of whether or not it's even fair to trade him before I answer the question of will I so there is that I will say though I will say uh, you are not the only person arguing for keeping REITs and that's gonna bring me to the polls right because in the last episode we left things off with a shitload of questions and we're gonna answer them one by one sound good Good. Let's do this. Let's go to roster moves, not the trade screen. Question number one was whether or not we trade Andre Vasilevsky. At the time of recording, the final results are 78 votes to 35 in favor of trading Andre Vasilevsky. So despite the fact that he just won us a cup, he is on the way out. It will be Gervais Schwenard as our start of the season, but the question is, who is the backup? We had the rank for the goalies. Gervais Schwenard finished with 102 votes at the top of that poll. In second, with 57 votes compared to the 26 votes for the third place guy, is Dirksen. So it will be Gervais Schwenard and Dirksen as the tandem for this season. Coburn will be down in the AHL. And as far as what we are doing with Reitz, while you guys voted by a 67 to 33 percent margin that it is in fact fair for me to trade Reitz. Maybe we give him a chance as the backup, see if he develops at all. If he really doesn't develop, we ship him off at the draft. So that is going to be the goal tending situation. Now we do still need to go out and sign another goaltender just in case of injury. Uh, granted, we could keep who we have, but you know, didn't mean to go to free agency either. Meant to go to view contracts. That's going to happen when I'm as tired as I am. Welcome 
to the show when I'm this tired. So we will be signing Reitz. Again, if we see crazy development from him, he stays, but I think some of you guys are being a tad bit too optimistic when you say, ah, oh, you might be able to go up by like 12 overall points or 22 overall points. Eh, time will tell on that front. Now won't it? So, I think as far as the goaltending is concerned, we're going to try to get these trades out of the way before discussing anything else. So again, Vasilevsky is gone. It'll be Gervais Schwenard and Dirksen staying. Reitz will also stay for the moment, but I do now have the ability to trade him if I want to without it being deemed as unfair uh, as ruled by the majority. So the big question is, where the hell does Vasilevsky go? Kapainen will probably be traded. He's an RFA next year. I think I'd rather just trade him rather than have him as the backup. I mean, you know, just like sitting on the roster as a healthy scratch because I'd want to make sure that it was Coburn and Reitz down in the AHL. So I think we'll just try to get the most out of him and sign somebody random, which means it is Kapainen and Vasilevsky that have to go. The big question is, uh, who the hell do we trade Vasilevsky to? And I suppose, because here's the problem, uh, we don't exactly need much help. Our roster is pretty well set, so more than likely, even Mike could be like, oh, trade for Larson. Eh, eh. I mean, we're going to be freeing up cap space, but that's the point. We kind of need to. So while there is someone here like Typolus, doesn't exactly make much sense to get him right now, does it? really doesn't because then he'll just you know have to take a spot for someone who's already there so what i'm going to try to do first and foremost is probably look for an eastern conference team here that needs a goalie like the buffalo sabers even though those two are both listed as backups they don't really have much potential so buffalo are you interested in trading draft picks you are and that could be where things get interesting Problem is, I'd have to take somebody back. So actually, is there a team? Odds are I'm not going to be able to find the perfect trading partner. The Islanders are actually close, though. And they're willing to trade picks. Okay, we could be in business here. What if I uh, take off Kapinen? Beautiful. I'll just outright trade Vasilevsky. They have uh, six goalies, but I guess they can afford to have seven. Works for me. So, New York, let's talk, because I want a lot of first-round picks. As many as I can get, actually. And with them not wanting to trade these picks, you know, the value could be a little bit better than expected. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and see how close that is to being a done deal. Will it be? Absolutely not. They do, in fact, have too many goalies. So let me double-check this. See if they have someone on a cheap, one-year deal... There is a Ben Goa, which is hilarious. Cheapest option would be uh, nobody great. All right, well, New York, you don't work, actually. You do not work. There has to be a team, preferably in the East, Toronto. Toronto. You do have a bit of a goalie issue. I don't really care, though. You do kind of need a half-decent starter. You don't want to trade that pick because you're going to be pretty bad this year. So that's all the more reason for us to talk now, isn't it? Now, there's no way that goes through. Trust me, I'm aware. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta reach for the stars sometimes. That's all. That's all you gotta do. To the Leafs, who might be terrible, and hopefully Vasilevsky isn't enough to turn that around. How close are we? I didn't mean to add that third back. That was a mistake. And again, that won't go through. You know what? In fairness, this might not work out for the Leafs either. <laughs> There's just too much value in those two firsts that they don't want to trade. Yeah. Okay. So the perfect trade partner does not exist. Again, though, preferably we would trade you to an Eastern team. Will the Blue Jackets work out? The answer appears to be no. They do have an Iliakis. They have an extreme need for a goaltender, though. So maybe, just maybe... There's no way that works, right? Rejected. What if we take out the third? Still rejected, to be honest. I thought that would be a little bit closer. Again, with them not wanting to give up those two firsts, the values skyrocket, unfortunately. But uh, Vassy has to go. We don't have room for you. You have been voted 
off the island. Can we make this work? Two first round picks from the Jackets. Wow. Okay. Is there an Eastern team that has interest in them that uh, would like to trade draft picks? The answer appears to be no, outside of Tampa. Cool. So I guess we'll find an Eastern team that can afford him, like Detroit. They don't want to trade picks. <laughs> but we will find the solution. If it's the last thing I do before I pass out, hell, I might pass out midstream at this rate. I don't know. We're going to go talk to the Islanders again because they're probably the ideal team for us, even though they'd have too many goalies, which kind of sucks. How can I fix Ah, God damn you, New York. What about the Rangers? Cap would be a bit of an issue. You definitely need a goalie. You just have a whole lot of nothing. You don't want to trade picks, though, because why would you? That would make things easy for me. Ottawa doesn't want to trade. For the love of God, somebody want to give up picks, please, aside from the Islanders. Pittsburgh. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's what I'm talking about. 50 contracts, but we should be able to make this work. <laughs> you don't need them. At this point, I don't care. Uh, we could take... Frappier back for one season. He'll literally just sit there and do nothing. So that's cool. Unless you have a half-decent prospect you want to give up, which you don't. So then we will go to draft picks. And we will try to take as many of them as we possibly can. Even though there's no way that goes through. Just a bit low. So Vasilevsky and a pick for Frappier and four first-round picks over the next three years. Has this series jumped the shark for some? Probably happened a while ago. Might happen again here. What do you think, Pittsburgh? Just a bit low. Damn. Well, you know, at the very least, this is my way of having fun while roster editing because that's a friggin' nightmare that we'll talk about at a different time. Vasilevsky, who was voted as, uh, on by you guys to be traded, so this is your fault. Remember that. You wanted this. And you had to have known it was going to be a ridiculous trade. It makes no sense to trade for any current players we don't need them so it'll be Vasilevsky and a fourth this year for a Frappier two first round picks this year a first next year and a first in 2028 Vasi to Pittsburgh Marshall welcome to the team you're going to be our sixth goaltender that we do not need so welcome aboard we go best lines because we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Kapinen just hasn't worked out, pal. Where can we send you? Tampa. How many goalies? Beautiful. You need a backup goalie. Hell, he could be your starter. And you want to trade picks. Isn't that lovely? Isn't she lovely? And by she, I mean Tampa as a team. Will that go through? Rejected. What if I take out the fourth? Sweeten it just a touch. You know... Funny story, Tampa. I can do that because I pick hoard with the best of them. Kapinen and a fifth to Tampa for two seconds and two third round picks. So there you go. Again, by popular demand, Vasilevsky and Kapinen are gone. We still need to sign a half decent backup in case of injury because we're not going to rely on Frappuccino to do anything for us. So let's go out. I love how we're, how we're listed as a rebuilder. That is that is false. And now we're listed as champions. What even is? What even is? I don't think anybody knows. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, so let's take a look here in terms of overall. Uh, Jack Campbell or Cal Peterson or Daniel Vladar. Uh, let's sign Cal Peter, Peter, Peter meme. Let's sign Peterson. Let's do it. One year deal, Cal. And we'll see what you can do for us. Now, we get to move on to the defenseman. The defenseman. So again, the situation is this. We have one, two, three, four, and five. Only one defenseman gets to stay. 59 votes to 57 and 56. It was very, very close at the top of this list. The first person voted off the island, though, is Eklund. 
he will be gone. The second person voted off the island is Kolzig. With the other three is where it gets to be very, very close. <sighs> Finishing in third place. Three votes back of the top spot, but still leaving is Kane. So that is going to happen as well, which means it comes down to Hatainen and Bronstrom. And by popular vote, Hatainen is staying on this team. Eric Bronstrom is on his way out. That is going to be our defense core this season. Bronstrom, Eklund, Kolzig, and Kane will all be traded. Lindbergh will probably spend the year down in the AHL as discussed, and we'll try to bring in a veteran just in case of injury. So let's see what we can do here. Again, the option is to try and trade for random prospects or just trade for a shitload of picks and see what happens. I mean, the last draft was hardly, uh, you know, perfected. So, you know, we'll see what happens as far as the picks are concerned. Eklund is gone. Kolzig, Kane, and Baronstrom are the four on the way out. Now, Kane does have a ton of value as well. So this should equate to getting back a decent amount of picks if we can find the right team to stack and send them all to. Unfortunately, that team doesn't exist. Unless we go to Arizona, but I don't exactly want to build up a division rivals defense that could be uh, completely, completely stupid, <laughs> really, if you think about it. So let's talk to the New York Islanders, right? The New York, you know the Islanders. Do you have a defenseman that I'd be willing to take back? Like Ragnarsson, he's perfect. Or a 32-year-old Jamie Alexiak, also perfect. But I think I'll try to tra uh, try to take Jacob Ragnarsson, although Alexiak's physicality. Ah, let's 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 go for uh, let's go for Ragnarsson, and from there, more pick hoarding because it's the only way to go. Oh boy, oh boy! You know what? In fairness, too, with them not wanting to trade these picks, this could get to be a tad bit rough. Just a little bit. This could be tough to deal with. We'll see how close we are with three firsts and a second. And there we go. And to be honest, uh, the AI is reading that as I didn't get too much back. Like, they won the deal. Which, you know what, is probably fine that we potentially took an L. As, I don't know if that was a ba like a bang of a car door outside. I imagine you would have heard that. That's, I'm kind of freaked out. Because it's late, but still, we're good. So Bronstrom, Kane, Kolzig, and Eklund are on the outs. Which, you know, maybe I could have gotten more back, maybe not. I just kind of wanted to trade everybody all at once to get that over with. We do need to sign two or three veteran defensemen. Could have just left players down in the AHL, but we wanted to get the most out of their value. So let's go ahead and probably send an offer out to three veteran defensemen or so. There's a chance that Ragnarsson could end up being sent down, depending on who is here on the free agent list. So let's take a look, and let's see who's here still at this point. Belpedio, Watherspoon, Goulet. Well, we got to sign Louis Belpedio. Got to. So that's six. Let's sign Goulet, who will be seventh. Dachin would be the eighth defenseman. Could sign one more if we wanted to, but I think we're good for the moment. Which means we move on to the main event. And again, this was close. Very, very close as far as as who is voted out of the top six. I'll tell you this. Russell Claussen, Marvin Mason, and Goldobin, whose name I can never remember. It's Victor. That's what I thought. I thought it was Vitaly for a second. The top three, as they are listed here, were also the top three in terms of voting. All three are safe. Elijah Lackey is not safe. Cody Glass, also bottom three. 
and Josh Fatino saw the bottom three. Tate Dwyer finished fourth. There were two votes separating Dwyer, Glass, and Fotinos, but four votes separating Dwyer and Lackey. Elijah Lackey has been voted off the island. The top six this season will be Klassen, Mason Goldobin, Glass, Dwyer, and Fotinos. Elijah Lackey is gone. The number two pick in that draft. Crazy shooting. But perhaps the disappointment in the playoffs after a strong regular season was enough to scare some people off. Maybe it was the contract. Not entirely sure. But the people have spoken. Elijah Lackey is leaving this team. Let's see if there's one more squad where we can sit here and just try to compile a boatload of picks. Somebody had to go, and I think if there was a favorite heading into last season, it was going to be Cody Glass. And that's just not the way that things went down. Crazy enough. So Elijah Lackey will be on the way out. We will see if we can find an Eastern team with a little bit of maneuverability in terms of draft picks. And we'll take it from there. Montreal, interested. Do you have a cheap forward? They do have Lafreniere, funny enough. Do you have a terrible contract? Max Pacioretty. I will gladly welcome Pacioretty to the Golden Knights for the first time in this series. Let's see what we can do here in terms of pick acquisition. As we're just going to go for all first rounders. Patch already in four first rounders for Elijah Lackey. Will that go through? Yes, it will. Again, did we get the most back possible? Probably not, but beggars can't really be choosers. Lackey is gone, which means the team this year again Klassen, Mason, Goldobin, Glass, Dwyer, Fotinos, the bottom six Fedorov, Rizzi, Verbata, Steos, Datsuk, and Letty. Patch already will be here for a healthy scratch. I am going to send him down for the moment, though. And then for the rest of the AHL, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to sign quite a few forwards to fill out this roster. Cap space wise, though, thankfully we're relatively okay. We could probably look to sign one other player uh, to a decent contract, but I think for the most part, we'll be okay. So. Let's see who we can find here. Let's go for Taylor Lear for the hell of it. Brings us up to 41 contracts. Let's go for Lindblom. We'll bring us up to 42. Let's go Kyle Clifford. That'll be contract number 43. Corrali is contract number 44. Anybody else? Drake Batherson. Five contract spots left on this team. Let's bring back William Carrier after all this time. So not bad now. 46. AJ Greer will be number 47. And we should be good from there. Again, Elijah Lackey voted out by one vote compared to Glass and Fotinos. Absolutely ridiculous, but that is the way that the cookie, in fact, crumbled as we get warned about trading players early, but that is what it is, as I'm ready to spam that A button a whole lot of times as everybody looks to sign. Was that everybody? Apparently it was. I didn't even feel like I hit the button that many times, but we are good to go. Let's get the quick look at what this team's going to be. So again, goaltenders. We're going to call up Cal Peterson. He's going to sit there as a healthy scratch. Among the defensemen, we do have Ragnarsson there already. Although, I'll go with the higher rated option. Let's go da uh, Jake Dotchin for the memes. Dake Jotchin for the memes. And then forward-wise, we have 10, 11, and 12 with Letty. I'm going to go best lines and then call up Pacioretty. So let's get a look here. Uh, what the team is, it's going to be Mason, Glass, Klaassen again, Fotinos, Goldobin, and Tate Dwyer wins out, stays on the team. Big, big point in time for him to prove himself. That third line is Verbata, 
with Fedorov and Rizzi. I'm all right with Rizzi being on that right-hand side as the sniper, and in the fourth line is Dotsuk, Steos, and Letty, who we signed as a free agent. I'm actually going to have Letty as the center. So not a great fourth-line center in terms of face-offs, but a lot of size there, too, between 6'4 and 6'5. Defensively, it is going to be who has the better shot here. I'd say because of accuracy, Bobrovsky. Let's see, low elite, medium elite, medium elite. Let's go with Rositas Provorov. Provorov will have the slot shot. And the two righties, oof, two righties. Kind of wish that wasn't the case, but let's go with Gertsen and Norton. Not too shabby. And then the big question, Maxime, or Maxime, I believe it's Maxime, Gervais Schwenard. MGC is our goalie this year, Josh Dirksen. As the backup, things have changed. A lot of players have left the club. But you can't say that on paper we're not still in a relatively strong spot. One last time, let's set up the AHL roster. And then we'll get to the uh, question of captaincy. So Frappier will sit for Reitz. Again, as a 63, I don't expect old Raphael to do that well, but... We'll see what happens. Vitaly Novikov is not ours. Is there anybody that we can take him out for? I don't believe Nagy and Maxwell are either. The AHL club signed a lot of players to fill out the roster. I believe Holt is the only player that's actually under contract to us. And he is. So let's go ahead and bring him in. And I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's see. Let's go ahead and drop all of the... Real players down to the lower lines. Make sure that the best possible players at a medium six, a low elite, and a low elite are on the top line. So Nilstorp at a medium six at 23. Not too confident in that. I think I'm going to bump up Bembridge. And let's see. Who wants to be the center? The answer is Holt. Second line, I mean, from here it doesn't really matter. Do we have any righties so I can at least be happy? Only Batherson. I mean, as long as we make sure that the uh, top centers are actually taking draws, we should be fine. A 72 there for Corrali. Is that the best one? Greer had a 70. And with that, we are pretty much good to go. No complaints offensively. Defensively, Pedro Toms is ours, crazy enough. Ragnarsson can sit. We need Schustrom and Christie to be in the lineup. Brown is not ours. So let's bring in Schustrom. And Lindbergh is also ours, actually, going to be... I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with Belpedio over Goulet. Sorry to the Sabres fans, but that's how we're going to do it. So in terms of potential, we got a couple of low elites. I mean, they're all low elites, except for the medium elite, Christie, who I don't think will develop... So let's uh, let's go with that nice little setup right there. The AHL team is also good to go. Well, the last thing we need to address before we start simming a little bit into this new season is, of course, the last thing we have to do is, of course, to handle captaincy and clear out the trade block. You guys also voted on captaincy. I gave you as many options and decisions to make in that last episode as I possibly could. And I, I'm not going to say that the leadership core is all that surprising. Really. Let's get down to business. <clears throat> Let's get down to business. As one would expect, as one would expect, there is only one captain. Russell Clausen is your captain moving forward. Cody Glass and Tate Dwyer will also be wearing letters. I was asked to change Goldobin's number. Let me know what you think, but I want to keep the two. I'm thinking number 92. What do you think for Goldobin? I think if we keep the two, that's a pretty strong option. Let me know what you think. I'm willing to change numbers if uh, if need be. And then there was the, uh, the Fedorov request as well, which, you know what? Make him number 91. I'm all, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. Are there any other weird numbers on the team? Glass being number eight's fine. 
Pacioretty's good. Mason's a 55, or Ware's number 55, which is normally a defenseman's number. What about uh, 69 memes? No, let's go with uh, let's go with a nice strong 61, playing like a prime Rick Nash. Let's go with a strong number 61, Kirill Dotsuk. I mean, there's only you know there's there's few options for one Kirill Dotsuk. Any other ones? Mason at 61, Verbata at 38 is fine. Fotino wears 47, which again I associate as a defenseman's number. So we are gonna give you the greatest number of all, number 37. <laughs> and for your favorite player in mine, Patrice Bergeron. Rizzi's fine. Steos. Again, I associate number 41 amongst the defensemen. Let's go with the great number 11 for Mr. Steos. And do I need to change these? Absolutely not. Letty wears number 66, which is just disrespectful. We're going to go number 63 oh, with him. And I think from there, we are good. Yeah, we're pretty much good to go. Sweet. Javesh Winard, number 7 for a goalie, though. I, I, I don't approve. <laughs> I don't. You get to wear number 32. Like a champion. That's a bit weird. But 30 is already taken. You get to wear number 40. I was going to give you the number 1. You get to wear number 40. Like a champion. And I could change any of those other ones that you want me to. But yeah, whatever. They're fine for now. Right? You're right. That's the correct answer. And as far as the Chicago Wolves are concerned, their leadership group will be, I don't know. Robertson as captain is fine. I want to reward the players who have actually been here for a while. Robertson, Bembridge. I'm actually going to take that C off of Robertson. I'd rather have it on Bembridge. Sorry, Jason. It's just the way it works. Bembridge as captain and one defensive representative. Let's go for a uh, freaking Lindbergh. Why not? Works for me. So there you go. Both teams are set and good to go for the new season. The big question is, though, just how good will we do? It's time to find out. Some players stepping into some bigger roles, some players being asked to do the same thing they did last year, if not more, now that we've chosen them over some others. Very, very intrigued to see how things go for us this season as again it's a big step defending stanley cup champions so many changes i haven't obviously addressed player roles or anything like that uh, player types i should say heading into this season which i don't know i'm intrigued uh, i'm intrigued to see how that goes as well there is room for maneuverability as far as the you know as far as the team is concerned with player types uh, you know, maybe changing out the power play, things like that. But really, it's a wait and see kind of thing. And the big, the biggest factor, I'd say, above all else. I mean, our offense is still strong. Our defense is still relatively strong. You'd like to think, at least I would. The big question is the goaltending. Gervais Schwinnard taking a huge step up, being asked to be the starting goaltender in his rookie season as Maddox Holt ends up going down to injury for just a little bit over a week. And Gervais Schwinnard goes down to injury as well for a week. We end up beating Tampa 5-4 to four in that game, but that is a fairly big loss as Russell Claussen. Russell, you are tremendous. I've seen better. No, Russell Claussen's the greatest of all time. <sighs> it's a lot to be proud of. Good work, Russell. Good work, buddy. I love you. Fedorov, I've been underperforming lately. And yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll be... Eh, just stay focused. Screw you. I'm trying to be motivational. I don't want to be motivated. Tell me I suck. Tell me I'm a piece of garbage who can't play hockey. Please. And then he gets hurt. See, that's what happens. That's what happens, man. As we fall to 4-2-1 and one on the season. I'll be very intrigued to get a look at some stats once we get through the opening month or so of the season. As we need to take out Novikov for Holt. I definitely think heading into the next episode, 
I'll change things around, especially with like the AHL, so that we can actually best line it and have them be relatively decent. Let's see what else we got here as we lose four to three to the Bruins. So we do have the tendency early on to allow quite a few goals, but you know, early season. Early season. I don't want to look at any numbers yet. I'm avoiding numbers for now. I believe in MGC. Because why would I not? And he gets a 4-0 shutout victory, presumably, in his return game. It could have been Dirksen in between the pipes. We are at essentially a 5-5 five five record on the year. Two games left to go in the opening month. As we lose to the Islanders, can we beat the Rangers? That is the real question. Max Pacioretty, get out of the lineup. <laughs> Although it is funny that you ended up on this team regardless, considering you were traded just days after we started this series. Let's see what we can do. The Rangers fall to us 3-2. to So 6-5-1 and one through the opening month. I'm not nervous enough yet to make changes. I want to sim another couple of weeks, double check how we're doing, and that way too you guys can voice your opinion for what changes we could potentially make as Schustrom goes down to an injury. Very intrigued to see how things go for us, what adjustments could be made, whether or not we made the right adjustments, how people are going to react to the trades, although again, I don't know what you expected me to do other than the trade and pick hoard, and of course that one deal where we probably didn't get enough back, but who's to say, could end up being a really high pick, as Schustrom is back from injury as well, he is a defense man, which means Goulet. The ghoul is out for Schustrom. Oh, there we go. Quick and easy. Let's see here. Tampa, it's a 3-2 to two loss. 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one on the year. Two games left before our destination stopping point. Can we beat Chicago? Yes, we can. 6-4. to four, And then we also beat Nashville 3-2. to two. So 10-8-1 on the year. In terms of the standings, we are currently in a wild card spot. Four points back of Vancouver. Marvin Mason... Over a point a game, 15 goals in 19 games. He is an absolute menace as a power forward. I certainly wish a different power forward in a different series could perform like he has. Cody Glass doing what Cody Glass does, nearly a point a game, 16 assists. And Russell Claus in 22 points in 19 games. So that top line is still delivering at a point a game pace. Great stuff. Second line is where we start to have trouble. Josh Fotinos. Not getting it done right now, even though undoubtedly he's great as a sniper. Victor Goldobin has 17 points. I imagine he has power play time. Solid playmaker indeed. And Tate Dwyer is also doing okay at 13 points. So I guess the big question here is, I don't know if we want to go playmaker, sniper, playmaker. I mean, obviously at top line we have a sniper, a two-way, and a power forward. The problem is, if we look at Fotinos, Fotinos... Uh, he's just really a great sniper, so we wouldn't change him. Victor Goldobin continues to produce as a playmaker, although you could argue two-way, but he's probably better suited as a playmaker. Tate Dwyer, also a great sniper. For Dwyer, you could argue two-way or power forward, but would we want to change up Tate Dwyer to try and get Fotinos going? The answer is probably yes. I mean, we voted to keep Fotinos as a younger option over guys like Elijah Lackey. So let me know what you think there as far as what we do player type wise to maybe switch things up. Maybe we just do something as simple as switching sides with the two of them. On the third line, Verbata only has six points. He had 20 points last year. Six points though. Currently listed as a grinder, which isn't making the most of that offensive awareness, but he doesn't have great puck skills and he doesn't have a great shot. So, while I'd like to make more out of that offensive awareness, if you look at his defensive ability and the physical ability, grinder or two-way is probably the way to go. Maybe we'll switch him to a two-way to try and get the offense going. Fedorov has four points in 15 games, listed as a sniper to try and make the most of that offensive awareness. Two-way could work. Should probably leave him as a sniper. Hell, we could switch him up to a grinder. Just He's not a specialist at anything, so he's kind of a weird one to judge. And then Rizzi only has five points, so that third line has been pretty ineffective. I'd say Verbata as a two-way, Fedorov as a sniper, 
Although Rizzy also works as a sniper, maybe we change Fedorov to a playmaker. Even though the puck skills aren't great, he has that really solid offensive awareness. Maybe Rizzy as the sniper could be what that line needs. So my opinion, two-way playmaker, sniper. Might be enough to wake up that line. On the fourth line, four points for Kirill Datsuk. Not ideal. Currently listed as a two-way. He could be a two-way, a playmaker, a whatever. I mean, two-way playmaker, probably the best two options for him. Curtis Letty has three points. And again, two-way works for him. You could argue playmaker or sniper. So maybe it would be for the best to have Datsuk. I mean, either or be playmaker or two-way. And then Steos, honestly, could do the same thing. So like I mentioned, we do definitely have options as far as player types. Particularly in the bottom six that has been pretty ineffective right now. On the defensive side, Rosita's two points but a plus seven on the year. Again, plus minus is not a great stat at all. But it is one of the few things we have to go off of. We also have Provorov only at five points. So he has not been the same since the end of the last regular season. Gertsen with four points, one for Norton, Hatainen with two, and six for Vyacheslav Bobrovsky. Perhaps the moment of truth here comes down to the goaltending. By the way, Pacioretty did okay when he was called upon. Gervais Schwinnard has been okay. Not great, but okay. Dirksen hasn't been all that great. So the goaltending hasn't exactly been on fire, and we're not getting much scoring outside of five out of the six members of the top six, which makes me wonder where the power play and penalty kill percentage currently lie, because that could be a pretty big factor. So goals four per game, we are averaging somewhere in the mid table, down at 289, goals against at a 263, which is also mid table. Power play percentage, is not way up there actually it's mid table somewhere is it towards the higher end i guess is my question the answer is kind of at 18.8 percent the penalty kill at 75 percent is the third weakest in the league so we'll look to address that as well when it comes to line changes that is going to do it for this one I want to leave you guys plenty of time to be able to react to what's gone down, what this team looks like. Uh, to confirm the amount of draft picks that we have, the answer is a lot, surprisingly. Uh, 2026, I mean, we have an extra six, no fifth, but three third round, four third rounders, quite a few second rounders, and quite a few firsts. Yeah, and then we have picks in the 2027 as well, so. That's what happens when you don't outright trade for prospects. Now, there's no guarantees all this is going to work. Will we end up trading up like we did last time? Who the hell knows? But I wanted to give you a look at that situation. Let me know down in the comments below not only what you thought of the moves made in this episode, but what we could do heading into the next episode as far as player types are concerned, just to try and spark something. I want to go to bed, so I'm saying goodbye and good night. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it as always. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. For now.